Vice President Harris, honored guests, I want to thank you all for being here. Secretary McDonough, thank you for your work to ensure that the VA provides world-class care and support for those who bore the battle. In a moment, I'm going to have the honor of signing the law four bills that the women and men in this uh, room had, uh, had written and gotten passed, bipartisan bills, to honor one truly sacred obligation we have as a nation. We have many obligations, but we only have one truly sacred obligation, in my view, and that is prepare those we send into harm's way, care for their families when they're gone, and care for them and their families when they're home. And uh, that's, a, that's a lifetime commitment, a lifetime commitment the nation owes to every one of our veterans. And it's one of that, that I embrace as Commander-in-Chief. For me, for Jill, and for the entire Biden family, it's also personal. And it's a commitment that we are helping to keep today because of the leadership of the women and men in this room. The first bill I will sign requires the Government Accounting Office to assess whether there are disparities associated with race and ethnicity when it comes to VA benefits and disability ratings. The weapons of war and the nature of injuries they inflict don't differentiate based on race. And the type of disabilities our veterans carry with them uh, don't differentiate based on race. So the claims approved and the benefits delivered should not differentiate either. We've heard from veterans of color who, upon returning home from their service, are treated differently from white veterans. This bill will help us understand how this happened, keep better records, expose the facts of the light of day, and allow us to do the necessary work of making sure that all of our nation veterans, all of them, are treated with equal dignity and equal equality throughout their entire time, with the consideration being no different for based on race. And I want to thank and congratulate Senator Warnock, who's here in the room, who has such a has been a moral leader in the U.S. Senate since he got here, and leading on this issue, as well as Representative uh, Takano, who has done a yeoman's work in the House. The second bill I'll sign is the Higher Veterans Health Heroes Act. I want to thank Senator Hassan and Senator Braun and Representatives Rice and Latta for their work to help veterans find a way to continue to serve their country. In 2019, the Inspector General of the VA reported that staff shortages are one of the causes of the many problems we face in veterans care. And at the same time, with our military, there are nearly 200,000 dedicated, well-trained workers in nearly every area of health care doctors, nurses, pharmacists, technicians, and physical therapists. They understand the health challenges our women and men in uniform face. 1,000, or actually 13,000 of them, are separated from active duty every single year. And we can do more by helping the separated service members with backgrounds in health care continue their work in health care in the federal government at places like the VA. This bill directs the Department of Veterans Affairs to create a program to recruit military medical personnel who have less than a year left in their service to work in federal health care occupations. This new program will build upon existing efforts to create a pipeline for former military health professionals. For both our veterans and our military medical personnel, service isn't just what they do, it's who they are. This bill is going to allow those professionals to continue the service to each other and our nation. And the third bill I will sign is the Colonel John M. McHugh Tuition, Fairness, and Survivors Act. For so many of our service members, their service to us is also about building a better life for themselves and for their families. And part of keeping our commitment to them means helping survivors get the education they need and to fulfill their dreams. This law, this law ensures that surviving spouses and children of veterans who access the Survivors and Dependents Education Assistance Program are eligible for in-state tuition wherever they choose to go to school, whether they live in that state or not. I want to recognize Senator Tester and Moran, Representatives Trone and Moore, for their work they've done on this bill. I also want to recognize the very special guest, Kelly McHugh Stewart. Kelly, where are you? Kelly, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. And the, she is the daughter of Colonel John M. McHugh for being here today. I want to thank her. Kelly, your dad was an American hero, but he wasn't the only one in the family's a hero. Your work, your work to share your story, to advocate for other surviving families and to turn loss into progress 
and understanding is heroic as well. So we thank you for it. Really, thank you personally. The final bill I'll sign today is the Protecting Moms Who Served Act. The Senate was, in this, in the Senate it was championed by Tammy Duckworth, a mom, a veteran, a senator, and Senator Susan Collins. It also was one of the pet projects that uh, the vice president had when she was a United States senator and sticks with her. I don't know how many times I've heard about what we have to do, and she's right. In the House, it was championed by a former nurse, Representative Lauren Underwood, and Representative Bill Bilirakis. And our, and our country continues to have the highest maternal mortality rates in the developed world, which is hard, it's just especially among black and Native American women. For many years, President, Vice President Harris has led the fight to address this tragedy of maternal, morali mor maternal mortality in our nation. Her efforts in the Senate are reflected in our Build Back Better framework and our investments in maternal health. We're going to help expand and diversify the maternal health workforce, improve, mental, improve maternal mental health, and bolster community-based programs, train providers, enhance research, and ensure, ensure maternal care is coordinated. As we continue that work, we recognize that women veterans, and there are more than a half a million women veterans in this country, under the age of 40, they face additional maternal health challenges. They frequently have other health risks that can complicate pregnancy. For example, expecting moms with physical disabilities or with mental illness are much more likely to experience pregnancy-related complications and have their children prematurely. This bill will commission a comprehensive study of maternal health challenges facing veterans and will invest in maternal care coordination programs at the VA. It's an important step in making sure we meet the needs of American mothers who have served. Early this month, I commemorated uh, Veterans Day at Arlington National Cemetery. On that solemn day, we lay a wreath and renew our oath. But keeping faith with American veterans required much more than laying wreaths or making more oaths. It requires acts. That's what you've done today, all of you. Acts. That's why I'm so proud to sign these bills. May God bless you and may God protect our troops and their families. And now I'd like to invite the folks to the stage as I sign the first bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, where we? I don't know what to tell you all. I only have one pen. <laughs> so you all, no, you you're, you're all going to get a pen, but I only got one with me today. I, I, I couldn't figure out how to pick 50 of them up here, but thank you. All right. Congratulations. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Government Accountability Office study on disparities associated with race and ethnicity with respect to certain benefits administered by the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. <laughs> well, sort of. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. My mother would say, you're doing God's work. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Pat, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. Hey, Big John. You're going to be here all afternoon. Good to see you, pal. Love you. How you doing? Family good? Okay. Dennis, hi, everybody. How are you? Good, Good to see you. All right. Okay. Okay, here we go. You ready? Oh, 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Leadership. Well, it means a lot to everybody that you did what you did. Seriously. You should be very proud. You got some great allies thank with you. you. <laughs> when you got big John Tester behind you, anything can be done. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Men title. Well, I'm not going to read it all. I'll just sign it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep the faith. Okay, we're going to sign the last bill here in a moment. When folks get the right folks are up here. Protect it. Tammy. Mr. President, how God are you, love sir? you. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. you are good. You did it. You did it. You did it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hey, it's good to see you, man. Tester blocks out the sunlight. <laughs> Tester brings a certain gravitas to it. Yeah, sure does, man. Uh, now, the last bill, Protecting Moms Who, Service, Who Served Act of 2021. All right, here we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to give you this time anyway. Thank you. Thank you. You said you are going to do this, remember? I told you. You yes, did. Yes, sir, I did. I did. Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel Tanya Robinson, there in uniform. Colonel, how are you? Well, I tell you what, whatever she tells me you're going to do, I just say yes. We served, we served together when we were lieutenants. Oh, great. Thank you.